So as we talk today, the one thing that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned was the idea of becoming indispensable. Like me, many of you have probably held careers and I don't know about you, but at least in my organization, there was a time of year where we knew it was coming. We knew that the moment we mentioned budget cuts, everybody looked around. Everybody kind of held their breath to see who would be next. And while we say that and we, we smile, it was a real thing. It was a real fear to be in that position. And you think, okay, so if I understand, I can't control what budget cuts would do or what that means to my organization, but I can control me. And I know that the values, the tools, the skills that I have, I can take them anywhere. And so I put this in the presentation specifically to understand that you get to create your value. What does that look like? You work on your mindset. Are you a callous tumor that speeds spreads and feeds into organization toxicity, you might want to look at that. Are you someone that can perhaps present in the moment a clear way of thinking or a new perspective? That's a value, friends. Take that, use it, leverage it. And now you've become indispensable. So it doesn't matter where you go with with a specific set of tools that someone didn't give to you so nobody can take from you, you could use it virtually anywhere. Learn how to communicate effectively. Lean in, engage, smile. Make yourself pleasurable and favorable to be around. Think about the thing that, you know, in, in all of the years we go and we get education, the one thing you really don't hear a lot about is soft skills. How is your emotional intelligence? How are your interpersonal skills? How are you leveraging them? These things make you invaluable no matter where you go. So couple that with your unique innate abilities to, to do your unique task. You've just presented a full, well-rounded package that sets you ahead. And these things, I find that it does not necessarily hinder you when you couple that with, well, I've, I've already gotten 15, 20 years in the industry. And, and now I'm, I feel like I'm competing with someone who is younger and newer and more advanced. No, this levels the playing field. Because now you get to, maybe you're a mentor for that person. Because you've worked on how you, you view the business, how you use the business, how things work for you. I know in this age, especially with the pandemic, we're talking, you know, millions of Americans getting out there and deciding what they want to do next. And the obvious is, right, entrepreneurship. But the reality is entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. And so I encourage you to, to you know, consider what's right for you. You don't have to follow the status quo and think, okay, well, I want to go out and, and do consulting work, or I want to go out and, and take a chance and, and go into this field to, to be an entrepreneur. And that's really not your wheelhouse. This is a perfect moment in time for you to consider what is your wheelhouse. If you enjoy accounting, there are many organizations that would love to have you. Start shopping around for organizations that carry the same values as you, that enhance and foster your unique mindset, that feeds you with an opportunity to grow, but that is not toxic in nature, that has you feeling burnt out or like it's either the, the organization or your family, because that exists too. And then as you go out and about and you, you start to shop, this puts you in the upper hand because now rather than sitting in an interview space and you're thinking, oh, wow, I ne really need a job. I really want this employer to, to like me. I want to put my best foot forward. You'll start to ask some really valuable questions like, what's the culture like in your organization? Or what would someone that has just resign from your organization say about the company? 
that's a tough question and not a lot not a lot of, of folks ask. But it's very valuable to know. I would want to know if if someone, you know, resigned from an organization because they were feeling burnt out and overworked, or if they just, you know, were coming towards the end of their time with the organization and they they just parted ways. It makes a big difference. So when you work on things like how to create your value, how to leverage your soft skills, how to work on your mindset, you then become indispensable. And rather than putting yourself at the mercy of the workforce, it becomes to turn that wheel the other way around, where you literally have a playing field of any and every organization that pikes and speaks to your interests, to the things you like, to the things that create interest for you.